What's up guys? This is Nicole Glass and I am back with another Q&A video on your favorite topic, Shutterstock and stock photography. For those of you who are new to my channel, I make videos on photography related topics and one of those topics is stock photography. In my last stock photography video, I answered a ton of different questions that I found in the comments section, but I only got through a few of them. Like I have so many more screenshotted that I think would be worth talking about. So here we go. But before I dive into this, I actually just wanna point out that Shutterstock recently featured me on their contributor blog, which is really cool. It's an awesome article and it was such an honor to be featured. So definitely check that out if you have a few minutes. I will link to that article below. All right, so let's get into some of these questions. I know flowers are really saturated. Do you think it's a total waste of time to take photos of flowers to upload? I have never sold a flower photo, at least not like a single picture of just a flower. I've sold photos where there were flowers in the photos, but I do honestly think it's going to be very difficult to sell photos of flowers unless you somehow take some photos of, I don't know, flowers that have never been photographed before, like some sort of rare flower species that people are really interested in. But ultimately just photos of flowers, I don't think they're gonna do that well. What you can do is incorporate flowers into your shoots in creative ways. Maybe you're photographing, you know, a model and you can incorporate some flowers into that shoot, but just a photo of a single flower it's gonna be tough. Interestingly enough though, I see more flower photos uploaded by people who are just starting out than any other type of photos. Next question. I will be traveling to my home state later this summer and will have photos of historical buildings, barns, and other similar things. Are these going to be categorized as editorial as I won't have any way of getting releases? Or can I upload them as commercial? Well, this is an interesting question and sometimes it's very difficult to know whether a photo of a building should be uploaded as commercial or editorial. So here's a few things you can do to figure out what to do. One, ask yourself, is this private property? If it's somebody's, you know, private house, you can't just upload that as a commercial photo. Now, if it's a popular tourist location, you can often upload those photos as commercial images but not for all tourist locations. And that's why some people might get confused sometimes. Shutterstock actually has a list of known image restrictions. I'm gonna to link to that list below, but here's also a little screenshot of that. And basically this is just a list of places that you might wanna photograph. A lot of these are well-known places and there's restrictions related to those places. So just scrolling through the list here, this is a list for North America, you'll find all the restrictions for places like, for example, the Disney theme parks. All Disney theme parks are unacceptable for commercial or editorial use, for example. So, you know, definitely read through that list if you're in doubt. Scroll down a little further and you'll see the Empire State Building in New York City and photos of the Empire State Building are unacceptable for commercial use, but they are, however, acceptable for editorial use. Same with the Flatiron Building. So about a year ago, I took some photos of the 9-11 Memorial in New York City, and I uploaded those photos as editorial images. However, they were still rejected. And that's actually because they are on this known image restrictions list, I looked that up afterwards and discovered that. So if you scroll down this list, you'll see World Trade Center 9-11 Memorial in New York City. And it says images that are taken on the grounds of the World Trade Center Memorial cannot be accepted for commercial or editorial use. So basically there are some buildings and landmarks that you can never upload no matter what. So if you're getting some rejections related to a popular tourist location or you know a building that a lot of people know about, go to this list, see if that building is on this list and see what Shutterstock says about this particular building. Likewise, there is also a list for objects and subjects that have certain restrictions. One of them, for example, is Albert Einstein. There is an Albert Einstein Memorial here in Washington, DC, which I have in fact photographed and I could not upload that photo as a commercial image. Lo and behold, right here on the Shutterstock website, it says, Albert Einstein, and that his name, image, and likeness 
is protected under trademark and copyright law, so anything related to Albert Einstein cannot be used for commercial use. So definitely go through these lists, familiarize yourself with some content that you can and cannot upload on Shutterstock, as well as the restrictions related to these items. Next question. At what point would you say a subject is too saturated to upload on Shutterstock? There's no like real number that I can give for this. You just kind of have to experiment a little bit. But you know, if you see 300 pages of results, then it's going to be very, very difficult for your photo to, you know, rank in those 300 pages of results. But if you see like two or three pages, then there's a pretty good chance that your photo is going to be discovered. And if it's a good photo, it can even rise to the top of those two or three pages. This could be 10 pages, it could be 20 pages. I mean, there really is no number, but you just wanna look at what's out there already and see if your photo can compete with the results that are already out there. Next question, is the description important? The description is very important, just as keywords are important. And one thing I have noticed is that the description is also searchable. So let's say, for example, that you have 50 amazing keywords and you wish you could add more keywords but you can't because you can only add 50 well if you actually you know write your description in a way that incorporates additional keywords that description is also searchable and people will be able to find something based on the words you use in your description so if you really want to optimize your photos to have the maximum discoverability then make sure that you have a nice, long, descriptive description, as well as a good amount of high quality keywords that people might be searching for. Can I upload photos of myself taken by someone else? Well, you're gonna have to ask yourself, do you own this photo? Is this your photo? If another photographer takes a photo of you, then you can't just take that photo and upload it and claim it as your own. But if you're giving your camera to your friend and you're saying, hey, take a photo of me, it's still your property, it's on your camera, it's on your memory card, you can upload it, that's fine. Just be careful and don't upload work that belongs to somebody else. This next one is actually a comment left by somebody which I thought had a lot of value in it. This person is actually a Shutterstock client and he says, I took the time to review Nicole's portfolio on Shutterstock from the perspective of a buyer and she is spot on in her advice. Her portfolio is full of these sort of photos I have trouble finding when I need something specific. Examples of what I'm always looking for and coming up short are 1. Human subjects doing banking, finance in a way that looks natural and not posed. 2. Human subjects seeking medical advice or assistance. 3. Human subjects doing normal activities in a natural way. I never need someone doing laundry and sniffing it like they are smelling the fields of Avalon in their detergent. Don't mimic ads, those companies pay for shoots. And four, older elderly subjects in any regard. The boomers are aging, the average model in stock is like 27. There is a market for photos that just aren't widely available. And then this commenter says, good luck for all would-be Shutterstock vendors. We rely on you. Just please don't upload any more pics of a latte with a heart drawn in the foam. I thought there was so much value in this comment that I just really wanted to share this. Basically, this gives you some ideas for what you know potential clients might be looking for. A lot of times they're not looking for those staged photos. They're looking for, you know, real photos because like he said, Said, companies that want staged photos will often pay for those photo shoots themselves. So really good points in there. All right, next question. Can you send the same photo to multiple stock platforms or do some have exclusive rights to your photos? You can submit the same photo to multiple stock platforms. I have definitely done that. However, some platforms do want exclusivity. Getty Images, for example, they want exclusivity. And there are some sites that don't require exclusivity, but that do give you the option to receive higher commissions if you exclusively upload your content for them. So it actually varies. Just check the terms and conditions of the sites you're uploading to. Shutterstock is fine. You can take all the photos you uploaded to Shutterstock and also submit them elsewhere. Just make sure to check the terms of those other platforms as well. Now here's two comments that I'm just going to bring up back to back. Can I download images from the Pexel site and sell them at the site of Shutterstock? I can't believe someone actually asked that. And then this comment, just a word of caution. And this commenter actually put an article which talked about 
theft of stock photography images, you know, images being stolen and uploaded under somebody else's account. And this is unfortunately a problem. Personally, I have also had my photos stolen and then re-uploaded by another Shutterstock user. Thankfully, one of you pointed it out to me, so I was able to, you know, get those photos removed. But this just made me very aware of a problem and that is, you know, people taking images from one place on the internet and then uploading it on stock photography platforms. Even if you don't upload your photos to stock photography, this could happen with your photos no matter where they are. So one way you can see if your images are being re-uploaded to Shutterstock by someone else is actually by clicking on one of your images and then seeing the similar images underneath that image. And if you see that the similar images are actually the same images on another account, then that's a good way to see if somehow your photos have been uploaded by somebody else. So in my case, the photos that were stolen from my account, what I did to have them removed is file a DMCA takedown notice to Shutterstock. And I actually learned about this from a, another YouTuber who made a very good video about what to do if your photos have been stolen. And I don't wanna take the credit for a solution that he provided and you know, all this awesome information that he put out on the internet. So I will link to his video below. Next question, what drone are you using? I am using two drones actually. I am using a DJI Phantom 4 Pro and I am also using a DJI Mavic Air in the cases where I'm traveling and I don't wanna take a big drone with me. Both of those are linked below. Personally, I prefer the quality of the DJI Phantom 4 Pro, but the Mavic Air is really, really convenient. How do you manage your storage? Do you shoot RAW or JPEG? I used to shoot JPEG, but in the past year, I've been shooting exclusively in RAW, which has its pros and cons. The pros are obviously that you have so much more control over the editing, and you can, for example, get more details out of those shadows and things like that. The con is obviously that the files are so much larger. I have gone through so many hard drives in the past year, and I just don't even know. I don't know. I have way too many hard drives. What is your thought on sites like Pexels? Lots of free high quality images. Could this ruin the hard work that stock photographers are putting into it? This is one of those questions, one of those stock photography existentialist questions. What is the future for us? Nobody really knows the answer, but I think stock photography will be around at least for a while and here's why. Yes, there are plenty of sites that give you free stock images and a lot of these images are really, really beautiful and high quality images. But if you go to these sites and you're looking for something very specific, a lot of times you just can't find what you're looking for. A platform like Shutterstock is so huge, you have a much better chance of finding those specific images. Now, yes, the appeal of free is great. However, there are lots of companies and organizations throughout the world that really just don't care if they have to spend a few hundred dollars a month on photos. They have huge budgets and that's like pennies for them. So they would rather sign up for a platform where they can get, you know, a much larger selection of photos than to get something for free, but not be able to find exactly what they're looking for. So I think maybe like individual bloggers and people like that, they might gravitate towards those free sites because they don't have budgets but those companies with big, big budgets, I don't think they're gonna be canceling their memberships. And I'm speaking from experience working at different companies that have stock photography subscription packages. And some of them have subscriptions to multiple stock sites and money is just not an issue for them. They're not out there looking for deals because again, they have these budgets and what's a couple hundred dollars for them. So I definitely think stock photography will be around for a while, even if there are tons of free sites out there. I can't speak for, you know, the distant future, like 50 years down the line, but for now, I think we're good for now. Now here's another comment. Thanks for sharing advice that will increase competition for you. Have you ever been asked to send in your press credentials for editorial photos? So there's two things here. Let's start with the question. 
Yes, I have been asked to send in press credentials, but right now I'm pretty familiar with content that does require press credentials and content that doesn't. And all you have to do to find this answer is go to shutterstock.com and look at what requires press credentials. You will find this page, which is titled, why was my content rejected for press credentials? And there are some events that will simply require you to either have press credentials or not be allowed to upload those images to Shutterstock, even as editorial images. That includes select air shows, concerts held in private venues, red carpet events, runway shows, sporting events, theatrical performances, ticketed festivals, and so on and so forth. You can definitely read this entire thing on the website. So if, for example, I am going to, you know, a basketball game that requires tickets, at a stadium here in Washington, DC. I can't upload photos of that game to Shutterstock without press credentials. There is just no way around it. Now, the other part of that comment was, thanks for sharing advice that will increase competition for you. And I will admit, sharing my top selling photos, you know, photos that sell, photos that do well, it does increase competition for me. There's no denying that. There are a lot of people that try to take the exact same photos that I've taken and it does increase the competition. So why do I share my secrets? Well, honestly, there are so many other photos that I have on my portfolio that do well for me. And I'm sure I will take future photos that will also do well for me. And there are plenty of opportunities to go around for everyone and I have not noticed any decrease in earnings since posting my videos. In fact, I have only noticed increases. So I'm not worried about sharing my secrets. Maybe I'll make less money on photos of my big toe. If you don't know what I'm talking about, watch this video. But in return, I'll bring in some earnings on something else, something that I might not have talked about yet. Do you guys enjoy these kinds of Q and A's or would you prefer more structured videos about a single topic? Let me know in the comments. And if you have more questions for future Q and A's in case you do enjoy these types of videos, then leave those in the comments as well. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new here, hit the bell notification button so you don't miss any new videos that I put out. And I will see you guys in the next video. Have a wonderful day.